Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London. This morning I'm looking at uh, an interesting publication, it's a very small pamphlet from uh, Waterside Press. And the title, it's this title over here, it's The Case for a Royal Commission on the Penal System. And it's being written by two people whom will be well known to most, Sir Louis Bloom Cooper and Sean uh, McConville. And there's an excellent forward by Sir Henry Brooke. Now, we've written a review of this uh, pamphlet, and I've given it the title. My wife and I have looked at this, and we've given it the title together. Sir Henry Brooke is right, quote, There is still an absence of any really coherent, up-to-date thinking within government about the purpose of penal policy. Now we'll come on to that. Let's just have a look at the very short pamphlet first of all. That's the front cover and then there's the back. It was actually produced in November 2014 and I went to the launch. Um, there's the, the bit inside, the front cover, and then you've got a, basically a very short book, 40 odd pages of pamphlet, which just sets out, if not now, when the prison and public policy, and then about the authors, and then there's a very useful foreword, which I'll refer to in a minute from uh, Henry Brooke, which talks about what he basically did when he was a judge. And then we get on from that to, um, if not now, when, which is the starting off point, uh, I'll just get to that for you, which is here, which is actually by Sir Louis Bloom Cooper. A uh, very important uh, area indeed. And of course the, the fact is that we, we don't know whether this will happen. But again, the second part of it is written by Sean McConville there, which is the prison and public policy. Now, as I've going to, you're going to hear from me in a minute, uh, there are some appendices and co comments and documents at the back. As I said in, in a moment, you're going to hear about where the problem lies at the moment. This is what we say about the, the pamphlet itself and what the case is all about. The case for a Royal Commission on the penal system is a strong call which will eventually be agreed one day in the future. Because that's the problem. That matter is about all that could be conceded at the moment. Even though the commission would, that is set out here would be both cost effective to the community and would return some confidence to the public in the way in which criminal justice is currently managed by the politicians. Most are also agreed, however, on the need for such an initiative now and that it is a matter of growing urgency. The question is always, and when will it happen, as the numbers in custody continue to rise as our population expands. Now, a clear case has been set out here in what is an excellent short pam uh, pamphlet by Louis Bloom Cooper and Sean McConville. And uh, Waterside Press have taken quite a, a challenge on board by putting it forward. And the authors suggest a re-examination of the main aspects of the United Kingdom's view of penal policy in the 21st century by this current call to action. And as I've said before, it's quite clear to me, and I think many other practitioners, that one day we will get it. And obviously the longer it takes, the more nonsense we're going to have, frankly, from people in Parliament. So what are the obstacles? There remain those difficult questions which political colonist and ex-Tory MP Matthew Paris succinctly listed in the Times recently when describing penal policy as a taboo subject. Paris and others say of prisons, they don't work. We know that, so what are we going to do about it? And that's the question. Because at the moment it's just going from one effective mini-crisis to another. And I have to say there's a lot of complacency because people want it to go away, they don't want to know about it. That of itself should be a quite clear and sufficient statement for something constructive to be done. Of course it hasn't been. Few observers probably disagree, disagree with the view that some new thinking should be employed because of the reconviction rates themselves and the general lack of successful rehabilitation in applied criminology. And that's 
Forgetting the theory, just look to see whether you can actually do it in practice. It has worked to a certain extent and will continue to work, but it is actually a matter of political judgment. Now, in the form of bullet points, Matthew Paris goes on to say, and we are quoting from him, a whole list of problems. Nearly half of those imprisoned are reconvicted within a year of release. We don't re-educate or train properly. Drugs get in routinely and by mysterious means. Suicides and assaults are rife. Many prisoners are mentally ill. Conditions in overstretched jails approach solitary confinement, yet every wretched prisoner costs £36,000 a year. Each inspection does its best to outdo each last in ransacking the lexicon of shock and indignation. Each is relegated. Everybody shrugs their shoulders, attention wanders and the disgrace continues. Our descendants will gasp in horror at our disregard. Now, I'm not invoking Elizabeth Fry here or anybody else. I'm just saying, isn't enough enough and let's get on and look at what we're going to do in this century about this problem. It shouldn't be a party political matter. It should be across the political divide. I wish that that would be the case. Unfortunately, of course, why don't we talk about it? Well, the answer to these problems can be summed up in one word, frankly, disinterest. The current proactive supporters for a commission make the case that as a model it should be reflective, effective and swift, capable of building consensus and of providing directions for, for a generation. I would go one step further and say we've got to have a much longer term idea of what we're going to do. If we're going to lock up 80 odd thousand people, um, that's really um, with an expanding population, it's not enough. We don't have enough places. We haven't thought this through at all, and it's time we did. That's putting the left and the right in their places, in their little boxes, and having a much wider intellectual review of where we are. That's, I think, what this real call is about. That these uh, points are, that I've mentioned from Matthew are agreed is not really in dispute. I'm sure most people do agree with them because the criminological landscape has changed so much in recent years, but society needs to catch up, and that's where the problem has been. As I said, not interested, and also, hopefully, it'll go away if we don't talk about it. A bit like the bills that come in, and you put them in the top drawer of your drawer, top, top shelf of your, your cabinet or whatever. It would not be that expensive for a government to set up and report on penal reform if the terms of reference are carefully structured. So it really is about political will and the current lack of it with all the annual tinkering with criminal justice legislation by MPs, most of whom are no longer representatives really in the real uh, life experiences we have. More of them are just special advisorships because they don't seem to understand what actually is going on out there. Uh, the days of barristers being in court in the morning in, and in the commons in the afternoon and evening have all gone. And so we're looking again at the restructuring of parliamentary activity and who we have as representatives. We have a general election this year. I'm recording this in January 2015 with a few months to go for the election. Um, obviously, we'll see where we go. Let me say a bit more about it. However, all that we've said is not enough because it's accepted that there is neither the requisite political will at the moment, nor the probable necessity of public support as we enter this long drawn out general election campaign. It's estimated probably that about 2% of the media's attention, probably the public's attention or interest, will be lavished on legal or penal policy as the election issues unfold. So it's not on the top of the agenda. The issues there remain such as how much should be spent on the penal system, because that is where there is actually a very substantial cost issue. Also, there is a need to set a new reshaping agenda for successive generations to adopt, where an objective view of sentencing can be achieved. The view could come for an evidence-based report, which will have both a practical meaning and effect for a more mature society, uh, with that vision that they would have of how this country deals with its criminals in future years. 
And I have to say one area that has to be looked at is rehabilitation because we seem at the moment to be going in the up opposite direction from that. And that of itself is, is a problem because it will just allow people to repeat offend. So, where do we go from there? We wish we could be more positive about this call to action. The fact is that it's been made as a first step, which will, if taken forward eventually, be of substantial long-term benefit, in our view, for society and offenders. Many feel rightly that some new thinking is needed to engage the new five-year government we're going to have in May, but this, of course, could be a pipe dream. However, there is a grave danger, and let me conclude on this point by saying that the seeds of this idea, robustly set out in the pamphlet, remain scattered on purely stony ground as the call remains refused and, and will continue to at the moment until something is done. At least for the time being anyway, we are in that predicament. I think there will be changes. I'm always optimistic about it. There is always hope that with a fresh team, there is a fresh hope for reform. This is the pamphlet. Again, we do need reform. There's the back of it. We need reform of the police. We need a number of things which we can then have as part of the reshaping of the 21st century. We'll get there in the end, but I'd like to thank Waterside very much indeed for um, going ahead and, and printing the, the pamphlet, and of course the authors and Sir Henry Brook for leading this at an excellent launch. Good luck to you, and I do hope on behalf of many people that we get somewhere with this, this century. Thank you. Bye-bye.